Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to use the Perspective Match Utility Tool in 3ds Match to create cameras that match photo reference. We're going to start by adding the reference image to our perspective view. To do this, drag and drop the photo from Windows Explorer into the 3ds Match perspective view. In the bitmap drop dialog, we have two options. We can leave both options enabled. This is going to add the image to our viewport and create a bitmap in the environment map. Then, we need to change the 3ds Max output size to match the photo. We can get this information from Photoshop or also from Windows Explorer by right-clicking the image and selecting Properties, and in the Detail tab, we can find the image dimensions. Back in 3ds Max, we're going to open the render setup by pressing this button or F10 on our keyboard. In the Common tab, change the output size to Custom and then update the width and height parameters to match the photo dimensions we got earlier. To finalize, press the lock button in the image aspect to prevent modifying the output size by mistake. With the perspective view selected, we're going to convert it to a Corona camera by selecting the Create Corona Camera from View option in the Corona toolbar. Then, select the camera and uncheck the target option. The perspective match option do not work if the target is enabled, so this is an essential step to follow. Each photo is different, but we can always find a common object that we can use as a reference for height, width, or length, like doors, chairs, tables, or in the case of this example, a kitchen countertop. The standard size for this object is 36 inches or 91 centimeters, so we're going to create a box with a height of 36 inches. After creating a reference object, we're going to open the Utilities tab and select Perspective Match. If you can't find it, press the More button and select it from there. It's important to notice that we are not using Camera Match. Look for the Perspective Match option. With the Perspective Match selected, click the Show Vanishing Lines option. With the radio button, we can select if we want to show all the axes or a combination of two of the axes. Then, we're going to press the anchor button and select the reference object. This will help us to use this object as a base for any changes to the distance or rotation. I also recommend enabling the 2D pan zoom mode. This will allow us to zoom in and move around the view without changing the camera. After all this preparation, we are ready to start adjusting the vanishing lines. If we need, we can hide the grid by pressing G on our keyboard. It is important to try to find long lines on our image and try to align our vanishing lines as accurately as possible. For this example, we can use the floor line to align the first X and Y lines. We can then use one of the walls for the Z line and on the opposite side, we can use the kitchen cabinets for the other one. To finalize, we will align the other edge and Y lines using the ceiling as a reference. After we have finished with the alignment, we can use the distance option to change the camera position and match the height of the object. If your object is close to the center, you can move it manually. Or you can also use the horizontal and vertical options to move the camera and match the objects. And the last option is rotation. With this, you can rotate the camera without losing the perspective match. Now that we have used the bots as a reference and we know it's matching the image, we can test it by merging a similar dining set to the one on the photo. We can use this option to add new elements to photos or even as a starting point for modeling. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.